hey I want to share this moment with you guys like for real for real not just pictures it won't be live because I don't have data on my phone so um, whenever I get data put on my phone I'll do Facebook lives in these secret places but I just wanted to share the magic of this I am walking on a trail really far away from the village. So I want to share a little bit of my path with you, symbolically I guess. I am like an hour and a half away from the village. I've been walking this far. I am training myself to do a really big hike. Remember about a year, it's been a year, last December, December of 2019, I posted pictures of the world's largest natural pyramid, that huge mountain that's in a village about two hours away from here in Venezia. And it's literally the most intense hike I've ever done. It's, I mean, I went with a group of people, which this time I'm not. This time I am going to go by myself. It's going to be very symbolic. I'm going to do it 10 days before my book launch on April 10th. Um... It will be, if things align for me to do it, I hope so. That's my intention. I have reservations for it and everything. It's just going to be me and a guide because I'm slow. And I don't want to be thinking about a group of people that I'm behind and everyone's stopping and waiting. I don't enjoy that. I want to just go at my own pace and smell the flowers and talk to the cows. And it's very spiritual for me because it's a very huge challenge. I'm scared of it and I've got to conquer it. And I want to be alone with myself to listen to all the things that come up while I'm doing the hike. The negative voices in my head about what I'm not capable of and the things that I'm the wiring and belief systems that I'm working on changing at a very very deep core level and I need to be alone to do that it's going to be very intimate and it's going to be very symbolic because of my book launch and how it seemed impossible I remember when the pandemic fell and I was doing my book and I, I was stuck in that hostel and not stuck I chose to stay everything happened and I was out shut in at a hostel the world caught on fire we're in a freaking pandemic everyone was terrified around me and when I thought, well, I can't go on an adventure on the outside, so I guess it's time to go on the same radical adventure on my inside. And that's when I started writing my book. Um, in March of past year, when I was in that hostel, I had actually already started writing bits and pieces in little coffee shops in Medellin, off beaten paths, uh, handwritten little scraps, and then actually putting together chapters in that hostel before I finally caught a humanitarian flight to come home to the States for a while to be with my daughter, Gracie, and and um, the same, I was in the States without a vehicle, without a job, without money. It's like, where am I, what am I gonna do? I went inside of me and I wrote a book and I spilled my soul. Like, and it was the hardest fucking thing I've ever done. It was the most personal thing I've ever done. I got stuff out that I have not shared with a soul. And now it's gonna be on paper in multiple languages for the world. And this hike that I'm gonna do in, uh, I think two weeks, two and a half weeks, it's very symbolic of it seems impossible, but I know the summit is there and I know that I can go at my own pace and I know that I can go one step at a time. If I can go one step, I can go two. And then once I get two steps and then I get two more steps, I've gone four. And once I can do four and then I double that, I've gone eight. And I just do that literally without looking at the final goal and I process the journey and then I know that I can make it to the top. And it seems impossible. Just like all the moments it seemed impossible with my book. I wanted to say, fuck it. I'm done. This is too hard. Emotionally, it's impossible. It hurts. I'm scared. I don't want to go any further. This is not too, too, too much already into the unknown. And I said, let's rest a little while then. Let's sit and enjoy the view from this point. But we've got to keep going forward. And I did. And now, holy shit, I'm about to launch my book. I did it. And this mountain is going to be very symbolic of that. <laughs> It's very personal and to share it with the world. Um, so I am going to be preparing myself. I am extremely out of shape um, from this point until I leave, until I do that in, on April 10th. I'm gonna be on a very strict diet with no meat, um, only eggs for protein, uh, vegan protein shakes, fruits and vegetables fresh from farmers around town, um, quinoa, couscous, super healthy food. I'm gonna be cleaning out my body and doing fasted uh, car cardio in the morning, going on long hikes, getting my heart used to doing long hikes. Um, and also on that date, this is a really big deal. If you've made it this far, congratulations. On April 10th, I celebrate 30 days of not smoking. I, when I left the States, I had told myself, look, I have conquered drug addiction now for like 
three years and counting, I've quit counting. I have been sober from alcohol almost a year and a half. And the one thing I have left to get rid of that is really hurting me is smoking. And I've been a smoker for 15 years and I could not imagine. I told myself, there's no way I can do that writing a book. No way. With all the emotions I was coping with and processing all the healing, all the work I did, there was no way I could quit that and living with a smoker. But now I said, when you leave the United States and you start a new chapter on this glorious chapter in line with your life purpose, it's time to take the self-love game to the next level. And that's going to be dropping the smoking. And, oh, today is day 12 and it is hard. It is so hard. I have been in rages for no reason um, going through all this change, but I've made it 12 days. I can't go back. So, and I have that date, April 10th. I celebrate a month of no smoking. The longest time I've gone in 15 years of my life of smoking cigarettes. And I'm going to celebrate the fact that I can go on the hike. So I'm cleaning up my lungs. I'm doing long hikes now. I've been going jogging and I'm taking my stuff to the next level. Um, because I've stepped into a level of worthiness that I know that I deserve to live the life of my dreams. And exploring what that means to me on a daily basis, really digging deep inside making sure no one's creeping up on me. <laughs> that trauma trigger is a little bit still. Um, almost gone though, but I don't think it'll ever completely go away. But but um, yeah, that's a little glimpse into my life. Um, anyway, um, I'm gonna go up this big ass hill right now and I don't know that I could talk to you while I do it because my lungs still are healing from smoking. Every day I've been hacking up so much and my nose is all clear now. I can taste food now. Um, it is hard. I wake up every day like, oh, fuck, I want to smoke. Oh, and then I get so mad. I'm like, remember, I can't smoke. And then I go outside and everyone else is smoking. And I'm like, why the fuck can everyone smoke? And I can't fucking smoke. And I get mad. And then I remind myself, you weren't born to be like everybody else, Jenny. You were born to go on your own path. And it's not supposed to look like anyone else's. So what would life look like? I know the miracles that happen being smoke-free. What would life look like? Or I mean, outgoing, being alcohol free, an absolute miracle in my life that's happened in 17 months now of no alcohol after 15 years of heavy drinking and destruction. I can do it. I can do this. I can do anything. I can do anything. Oh, look at this beautiful moment. Look at the freaking paradise that I'm doing, that I'm living because I did it. I owned it. I stepped into my worthiness and I said, what people say about me is none of my business. What society says I'm supposed to do is no longer mine. What I'm supposed to look like in whiteness and gender and middle class privilege and political systems and social codes that we all, we don't even realize that we operate by are no longer a part of me. I am working on freeing myself completely of them, writing name, my name on everything I want in my life. <sighs> Pouring out love to everyone around me because my cup is full. It's a self-love game, guys. It's not selfish to self-love. I love to give. I love to share with people. I love people so much. Most of them. Working on that one. But I can't do it unless I fill my cup first. So, well, I'm going to climb this hill. <laughs> I love you. Bye.